I remember when I was a kid, uh, my grandparents found this old newspaper in their basement that had an article about the last Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine, going extinct. And uh, this picture of this weird animal, I, I, I held on to it for so long, I have no idea where it is now, but it, it fascinated me. And it still fascinates me, the story of this extinct animal uh, that went extinct in my grandparents' lifetime. And as I got older and I learned more about the thylacine, I, I found out that there is actually some efforts being made to bring them back from extinction. Uh, there are tissue samples and preserved thylacine bodies that kind of have the building blocks that could potentially in the future lead to bringing back this once extinct animal. And since we're the ones who drove it to extinction, isn't it sort of our responsibility to bring them back? We'll get more into that in a second, but first of all, I wanna tell you guys that I am at Odeon Point State Park in Rye, New Hampshire. This is a wonderful place. I've been coming here since I was a very small person. We got the forest over there, we got the beach over here, there's the ocean usually found adjacent to most beaches. And I promise not all these videos are gonna be in New Hampshire. I will eventually travel more, but time is a hell of a thing. So back to the thylacine. When people ask me what my favorite animal is and I tell them it's the thylacine or the Tasmanian tiger, most people don't know what the heck that even is. Which makes sense because before anybody in my generation could see it, it was hunted to extinction. But it's such a fascinating story and I won't get into all the details, but basically uh, it, it's one of the many animals that has been either hunted to extinction or driven to extinction from human activities such as deforestation or pollution or climate change. And as a member of the species responsible for these extinctions, uh, I, I've, I've always felt this inherent guilt and this desire to do whatever we can to bring them back. And it's always really felt like a thing of science fiction. You know, we have Jurassic Park and Jurassic World now, uh, and you know, we've, we've popularized the idea of de-extinction, but what if it was a reality? And with dinosaurs, it's really not. Maybe, maybe a long time from now we'll be able to, but uh, we're not going to be making a Jurassic Park anytime in the near future. However, something that is possible is bringing back recently extinct species. I'm reading a book right now called Regenesis, and I strongly recommend it to anybody remotely interested in this topic. So the oversimplified version of events that has to happen in order to de-extinct a species is you need DNA from the extinct species, you need its closest living relative, and you need a relative that's close enough genetically where you can replace some of the missing genes from that extinct species and uh, create an embryo of that extinct species hybridized with its close relative, uh, and then find a donor parent who can hatch the egg, give birth to the offspring, etc. And of course it's more complicated than that, but that's the basic gist of it. So it's less of a question of can we do it, now it's if we should do it. And I've gone back and forth on this idea for a long time. So there's pros and cons to this, and let's start off with the pros. The biggest pro is, of course, bringing back an extinct species. The passenger pigeon is a great example of this because it was at one point a keystone species, meaning it had an incredibly important role to play in the ecosystem that affected almost the entire country. In the United States, there was a point in our history where passenger pigeons would blacken the sky because they were in such high numbers, and in a matter of just a couple of years, they were hunted to extinction. This species is used often as an example of how easy it is for an animal to go extinct. Another huge pro is how much we could potentially learn about biology and genes from the de-extinction process. For example, there's a guy named Dr. George Church who's working to bring back the woolly mammoth, believe it or not. And a part of doing that is actually editing the genes of Asian elephants. And during his research, he actually had a minor breakthrough in the development of a, a vaccine for a strain of herpes that's been killing Asian elephant calves around the world. So there's research being done to resurrect extinct species that is having a positive impact on uh, currently endangered species. And this may be a bit of an anomaly, but it's still very cool and it shows what could be done uh, if we continue down this path. So those are the pros, bringing back endangered species and what we can learn from bringing back endangered species. So what about the cons? The biggest con is how expensive it is. As you could imagine, it isn't cheap to bring back an extinct species. And unfortunately, the world of conservation is already very underfunded. So this would take away even more money from current conservation efforts. It could also take focus away from current conservation efforts because, you know, it's bringing back an extinct species to a lot of people could be much more interesting than saving already endangered ones. Another big con to de-extinction is one that I didn't even think about until recently. Uh, my good friend Amanda Sargent mentioned this to me when we were talking about this subject. She told me that if we were to bring back extinct animals, 
it would take the value away from endangered species because if we're able to bring them back anyway we shouldn't have to try as hard to save them and uh, although it's more expensive if it becomes possible people are generally kind of lazy and they have lazy thinking and and if word gets out that well we can just bring back that species if it, go, if it goes extinct there will be less public pressure to prevent that extinction in the first place. There's also the question of tampering with the natural order of things. Um, to be fair we already tampered with the natural order of things by causing an animal to go extinct before its time but tampering even further to bring them back could have unintended consequences that we just don't know yet. It's that whole Dr. Ian Malcolm concept of your scientists were so preoccupied with whether they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. And this sort of begs the question, are we at the point in scientific discovery where we have to actually pick and choose which projects to move forward on? We're able to do things, um, but should we? I think, you know, this isn't a new question. Back when the Large Hadron Collider was first being discussed, people thought there was a possibility of creating a black hole if it was turned on. But instead we discovered the Higgs boson particle. Um, and that was a huge breakthrough. But let's say just for fun we could create an artificial black hole. We wouldn't, because unless we had some way to contain it, it would swallow up everything on Earth and uh, make everything very bad. Same line of thinking, if we could create a super virus and release it to the public. We can, we could learn something from it, but it could also cause incredible amounts of damage. This is the extreme end of the spectrum. Um, and so you have to wonder where the cutoff line is for this is, this is too much, we can learn, we can research, we can do these things, but should we? There's the very obvious no's, like the two I just mentioned, and then there's the gray area, like the extinction. I've always been of the belief that if we can bring back dinosaurs, we shouldn't, because they went extinct due to natural causes. Um, but for animals that have existed alongside humans and have gone extinct because of human activity, I am at such a loss. I still don't know. I go back and forth on this all the time. And as it stands, that's my take. I don't know. There's so much to consider. There's so much work that still needs to be done, but I'd love to know what your take is. So please let me know in the comments down below. I think we're gonna have some really interesting discussions on this one. Uh, so, so let me know what your thoughts are and uh, go take a hike.